Isaiah chapter number 48, Galatians, the 48th book of the Bible. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob. Okay, so it's written to who? It's written to Israel, which are called by the name of Israel. Jacob became Israel. Israel became the nation. And are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by the name of the Lord, and make mention of God of the God of Israel, but not in truth nor in righteousness. Uh oh, somebody's using God's name, and they're not supposed to be using it the way they're using it. That violates another commandment. For they call themselves of the holy city Jerusalem, and stay themselves upon the God of Israel, and the Lord of hosts is His name. Now God, I have declared the former things from the beginning. So God started with the future and worked his way back into history. God didn't say, oh, this happened yesterday. Uh, God, this didn't happen yeah, yesterday. God said this is going to happen tomorrow. That's the God of all gods. Never mind telling me what I did yesterday. God already knows what I'm going to do tomorrow. God knows when my life is going to end. Now, Lord willing, if I have, God's going to know what, I'm going, what I'll be doing next Monday. Lord willing, he's going to know what I'm going to be doing next year if I have another year. God knows what I'm doing now. He knows what I'm going to be doing. And he knows everything about me. He knows everything I have done. The only one thing that God doesn't know about me is my sins that are under the blood. 1 John 1, 9. That's the only thing he doesn't know. And they went forth out of my mouth, God's mouth, and showed them. I showed them. Here they are in the book. I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. Because I knew that thou art obstinate. Oh, here we go. Hard. Talking to the Jew. And thy neck is as iron sinew. The muscle. The neck that's not going to be cut. Hard. Stiff. Stiff neck. You'll see stiff neck later on. And thy brow brass. That's your, what your eyebrows are. They're hard headed. I have even from the beginning declared it to thee. Before it came to pass, I showed this thee. Least thou should say, My idol has done them, and my graven image, and any and my molten image has commanded them. God says, I'm already going to tell you what's going to happen, so you can't say you're God, and we're back on the gods again. We're back on the idols and images. So you can't say, well, my wood idol already declared it to me. No, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Moses, Aaron, Samuel, Joshua, prophets of the Lord, men of God already told you. And if you stole it from the Bible and apply it right now, you, you just stole it from God. I mean, they can be so general and so weak. And, you know, someone's gonna, someone important is going to die this year. Big deal. Anybody can say that. All, gonna say, all I'm saying, all will die. The way to the sin is death. Somebody's important to somebody. Because I knew that thou art obstinate. What are the things to be saying about your people? What would Jesus do? What would God do? He call you who you are and what you are. I have even from the beginning declared to thee. He told them. And then they turn around and say, my idol has done it. You're robbing from God. And he says, you're obstinate. You're not going to turn. You're not going to get right. You won't repent. Thou hast heard, see all this. Thou hast heard, see all this. That don't make sense. 
Thou hast heard, see all this. How do you see what you heard? By God doing it. God is just not words, he's action. And will not ye declare it? I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou didst not know them. They're blinded. They're deaf. And they were that in the time of Jesus. They are created now, and not from the beginning. Even before the day when thou heardest them not, at least thou should say, Behold, I knew them. God says, I'm, gonna, I'm doing something new, and you can't say, Well, I already knew it. I've already showed you something, and you didn't, you didn't get it. I've declared the end from the beginning, so you can't say your gods get, get the credit. It's amazing. Yea, thou heardest not. Jesus spoke all the time to them. And they didn't hear him. The disciples didn't get it. How many times did he tell them, Behold, I'll be turned over to the Gentiles. I shall be scourged, mocked, and, and I will die. And the third day I'll rise again. And the women come to the grave looking for a dead body. The disciples are still hidden. They don't even show up to the grave for the third day. They ought to. He told them. And when the women come back, the angels proclaim, He's not here. He's risen. I'm, You're a bunch of liars. Get out of here. It's not true. The, the two men on the road, he, he, he made us. Haven't you heard the things today? He's dead. And, and the women tell us that they saw angels and blah, blah, blah. They didn't believe. They didn't believe. Yea, thou heardest not. Yea, thou knewest not. Yea, from the time that thine ear was not open. For I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously. I knew you would be treacherous. Look at that. Not only have I know what's going on, I know what's going on with you. And was called a transgressor from the womb. For my name's sake, will I defer my anger? That's the, that's the only reason. I mean, if there is any pe group of people who deserve, I mean, listen, they're God's people. So I'm going to be very careful. But what one people has been denying God over and over and over and over and over and over, and God's been helping them over and over and over and over. God made an oath to Abraham. God swore by himself. God is abiding to his word. These are his people. These are his children. And he said, for my name's sake, not Abraham, not Isaac, not Jacob, not Israel, but Jehovah's sake. I will defer my anger. And for, now that's a, because he's going to have seven years of anger, chastisement. They're going to cut the necks and heads off Jews by the guillotine, 48-4. You got a hard neck? I'll break it. Antichrist, yeah. Take off their heads. I saw the souls of them under the throne. Their heads have been, uh, their heads been beheaded for the word of God, is it saying, Revelation? You know what's really going to take the Jew to be broken is Satan. Chastisement of God using the rod. Though I walk through the valley of shallow, shallow death, thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. For my name's sake, I will not, I will defer my anger. And for my praise will I refrain from thee, that I cut thee not off. Now, when you look up that cut off in the Old Testament, that means that you went to hell. This person shall be cut off. This tribe shall be cut off. This family shall be There was no remedy. There was no offering. He 
Behold, I have refined thee, make better, but not with silver. Silver can't buy. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Oh, he's going to turn the heat on. The iron furnace is what Egypt was called. Adolf Hitler put him in furnaces. Gassed him. Nebuchadnezzar put him in put the three uh, Hebrew men in, in the furnace. You know, when you say the expression, you know, the, the heat is on or, or, or the God's turned up the heat. You better be thankful he hasn't put the furnace into you. Listen, for Christians out through history, they have been burnt at the stake. You talk about a furnace of fire. For my own sake, God's sake. It used to be a particular expression when I grew up. I don't know if they see it. It used to be for Christ's sake. And it used to be a curse. But for my own sake, even for my own sake, double, twice, verily, verily, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? The Jews have been polluting God's name. They are God's people. That All of Israel today in Jerusalem is really a mockery of God. That dumb of the rock there is a mockery of God. The walls being broken down is a mockery of God. The weeping wall is a mockery of God. Where is their God? And the Bible speaks about they will walk through that city. They will hiss and clap their hands and say, where is their God? And the answer will be, because they have forsaken him. And the testimony doesn't go to God. It goes to that the Jews have forsaken. But polluted my name. They have stories that will define Jesus of who he's not. And I will not give my glory unto another. Romans 121. They've been given to idols. They've been given it to images. They gave it to the Caesar. We'll have no God, no king but Caesar. Really? You just gave your glory to a Roman man and not to Jesus Christ, who is who is the Son of God, a man above men, with with God's blood running through his veins. Acts twenty twenty eight. He said, "We'll take Caesar." Oh, even that. You know what? We'll take Barabbas. There's got to be a third one somewhere they, they chose over. You have uh, Caesar and you have Barabbas. That's giving the glory to another. I mean, they gave him the glory when he came in on the mule. But that only lasted about a week. Hearken unto me, old Jacob in Israel, my called. I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. Now match that with Revelation. The Alpha and the Omega. You see that word I am? You match that back to uh, uh, Exodus. I am. And you match with Jesus Christ. That I am. I am the water. I am the bread. I am the light. I am the way. Jesus Christ proclaimed to be the Jehovah that we're reading about. That one that Moses said, what's your name? I am that I am. Jesus Christ said, I am. Jesus never said, yes, he did. You just don't know your Bible. And again, you match this verse with Revelation 1, 17, 22, 13. The Alpha and the Omega, that's what it's saying. I believe the Alpha and Omega are, are Greek words, the Greek alphabet. Well, you're not going to get Alpha and Omega in Isaiah 48. Isaiah spoke Hebrew. So what you get, I, I am the Alpha and Omega, you just got 
it trans in from the Hebrew to the Greek. It's the same thing. My hand also had laid the foundation of the earth. His voice. Genesis 1. And God said, let there be, and God used his hands in his voice. My right hand has spanned the heavens. That's the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ is at. The mighty, powerful right hand. When I call unto thee, they stand up together. What about the heavens standing up? What that means, I don't know. All ye, assemble yourselves and hear. Well, they, were, they were listening, but they weren't listening. Which among them has declared these things? The Lord has loved him. He will do his pleasure on Babylon. And his arm shall be upon the Chaldeans. Why? Cursed be him that curses thee. Even though God uses Babylon... To go in and chastise Israel that needs a chastising. God says, listen, I will curse them that curse thee. You do that, I'm going to get you. Now, if God ever calls you to, to do anything against the Jew, whether chastisement or whatever it needs to be done, you just say, God, listen, hold on here for a minute. I know you're God. I know you're wonderful. But if I do anything against that Jew, that what you told Abraham in Genesis says, you're going to curse them that curse thee. I'd rather not do it. Jesus said, woe unto offenses must come, but woe unto them that do the offense. Lord, I don't want to be the offensive. I'd rather just plead the blood and get right and do right and not do anything against those Jews and pray for the peace in Jerusalem and pray for the Jews and any missionaries that's out there trying to reach the Jewish people. Anywhere in this world. Nebuchadnezzar could told God, say, uh-uh, I heard something about the curse, and I'm not going to do it. Now, uh, Balak tried to, but for the riches of fame and, and glory, he told him how to... Listen, when Babylon came in the third time, the military captain walked up to Jeremiah and said, the Lord did this to you guys. And gave Jeremiah a friendly rebuke that what Jeremiah said was true. Now Cyrus stepped in and said, hey, the Lord told me to let you guys go back. There's no curse. There's a blessing. I'll give you the gold. I'll give you everything you need. That's a blessing. And he blessed Cyrus. And there's a quite possibility that Cyrus will be in glory. Rome will be charged. Russia will be charged. Germany will be charged. All the nations that curse the Jew will be charged. You know what happens to a nation in the tribulation that curses the Jew and won't help them? They'll go right into the lake of fire. They get the, the wrath of God out of his mouth, the sword, the red eyes of fire. Never do anything to that Jew. Never. And if you've done something to a Jew and you don't realize he's a Jew and later on you find out he, he's Jewish and of Israel, you need to really repent and sackcloth and ash and claim, you know, ignorance. I, even I, have spoken. Yea, I have called him. I have him. I have called him, I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come ye near unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret. Jesus spoke with always a company of three or more. Whether it be Peter, James, and John, the whole twelve, a village, at least Peter, James, and John, when he healed somebody, he was out in the open. 
I have not spoken a secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there am I. Now watch this. And now the Lord God, Jehovah, and his spirit, the Holy Spirit, have sent me. Here's the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, oh, by his back, the Holy One of Israel, the only Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit, make, a, make money. Nothing wrong making, making money. God says, I taught you how to do it. Which lendeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go, that leadest thee. Jesus said, I am the way. Come. You heavy burden, come. Peter says, Lord, can I step out? When he walks on the water, come. Oh, that thou hast heard it, hearken to my commandments. Then had they peace be as a river and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea but they didn't hearken and they got turmoil and distress and hardship and, and are dying and going to hell today without Christ thy seed also have been as the sand and there's you can't count them and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof his name should not have been cut off, nor destroyed from before me. But many were, many are. Go ye forth to Babylon. Jeremiah will tell him. Give yourself up to Nebuchadnezzar. And I believe at one point he's arrested for trying to defile the nation. Flee ye from the Chaldeans. Alright, go forth to Babylon. Go. Get out of here. Be chastised. Flee ye from the Chaldeans with a voice of singing. Declare ye. What's to flee from the Chaldeans? That's when they come back under Ezra and Nehemiah. Look at that. You see that, you see that comma? Go ye forth of Babylon. Comma. Flee ye from the Chaldeans with a voice of singing. See that comma? That is 70 years. That's a long comma. You know, sometimes the Bible you can't understand because of comma. Because of colon. Because of a period. Because of a verse. Because of a paragraph mark. Because of a chapter. That comma is 70 years. What is that comma? Here, Daniel, Meshach, and go. You eat, Bab you eat Babylonian food. You become a Babylonian. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. Oh, magicians come forth. I got this dream. Well, tell us. I don't remember what the dream is. You tell me. Well, then I'm going to kill everybody. Shadrach, Meshach, and go. Yes, Daniel. We need to get down and pray because he's going to kill us all. We need to get this this prayer answered. Hey, I just made a golden image. Everybody, fall down and, and worship me. No? Okay, go. Oh, Daniel, you prayed. You're in the lion's den. Michael, go show Daniel the revelation. That comma from the end of Jeremiah, from the from the end of Second Chronicles to Nehemiah to Ezra, seventy years. That's a long comma. Now, can you imagine? I say, now think about it. Here's a bunch of rebellious. They got idols and imagery all over. Go ye forth to Babylon. Now they wouldn't listen to Jeremiah. All right, now you're there. Flee ye from the Chaldeans with a voice of singing. Come on. What, what's your problem, Isaiah? Declare ye, tell this. Utter it, even to the end of the earth. Say ye, the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. Is that something they teach in the in the synagogues today? That God redeemed them from Egypt, 
God has redeemed them from Babylon. He's going to redeem them from Rome. He's going to. Don't you think they're going to break out and singing for a thousand years at that time? The Bible says even the trees are going to clap their hands. And they thirsted not when he led them through the desert. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. That brings back a little history. He claved the rock also. Now, as long as you keep saying the rock, it doesn't say a rock. A rock is any rock. But the rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the waters gushed out. Bible says that rock followed them in Corinthians. You got a rock that's, that's flowing, that's following. The Bible says it was a flinty rock. Flint rock is the driest rock you can ever get. And that rock is following. That rock is giving them water, and they still rebel against God. They still don't listen to him. You'll get idiots say, let me see God. Why? Israel did. Israel heard God's voice. Listen, I can't tell you what the voice of God is, but if I were to hop into a time machine <coughs> and go to Exodus 20, Exodus 21, pull a couple of Jews off the side, say, what did God's voice sound like? And they would be able to describe you what, what the voice sounded like. I can't. And they still, they still made a golden cow. They still made a commander and headed back to Egypt. They still said, well, the land's not able to do, you know, blah, blah, and all the grasshoppers and the giants and the walls up to heaven and all that, and died in the wilderness. Now, this is something you're going to start seeing now. There is no peace, save the Lord, unto the wicked. Well, I got peace. It's temporary. If you're not doing what God wants you to do, you're not obeying God. You've got a temporary peace that won't last. And it probably costs you money. But when you're burning in hell, and you're being in torment, you'll have no peace. Because you're wicked. And that's what the Bible says. These people are wicked. He sums up the entire chapter. You're wicked. And you're going to have no peace. And he mentions those idols, those images, once again. And you're going to Babylon. But don't you worry. I love you. For my name's sake, you're coming out of Babylon. And you'll come out with singing. And the foundations will be laid of the temple and of the city. But, with all that, there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Jeremiah, he got through. Beirut, he got through. Daniel, he got through. The wicked of Daniel's time, man, they, they were thrown into the lion's den and became alpo for lion food. You know, here's a big bag of lion food. It's got a picture of the of the president besides Daniel of Babylon. Open it up and throw it in there and feed the lion. You ever wonder the men that were burned when they opened up the furnace for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Those were the men that reported Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the king. You wonder about that? There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. And if you say you got peace, you are a liar. That's what the Bible says.